And again, we'll start off with the, uh, the, the lead in. So which of the following complications is most likely to occur in this patient if he immediately begins to climb at high altitude? Okay, think about that. Think about what, uh, the, uh, what kind of information you need to be gathering uh, with, uh, with that kind of a lead in as we read the stem. A healthy 19-year-old man has experienced nausea and fatigue since arriving yesterday in a high-altitude city for a mountaineering expedition. He has moderate dyspnea while climbing stairs and walking fast. He departs with the expedition team to go to a higher elevation to begin the climb. So the question, which of the following complications is most likely to occur in this patient if he immediately begins to climb at high altitude? And we're going to pause. We'll ask you, you know, how many steps do you think it will take to get to the right answer? Okay. And got some folks that are that are answering. So with that, I'm going to uh, hand it over to Paris. Paris? Thank you, Jeff. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show you what we think are the important clues in this vignette and the lead-in. So now we've got a younger patient, a 19-year-old man, and they specifically went out of their way to, to tell us that he's healthy, okay? So I always like to make note of that. Why are, why are they telling that uh, to us right off the bat, okay? They then tell us about his presenting signs and symptoms, nausea and fatigue, okay? And whenever you're dealing with these types of questions, you always want to make note of the temporal association. When did they arrive in this altitude? Was it yesterday? Was it a week ago? Because that may help uh, answer the question that they're going to ask you. They then tell us, importantly, that he is departing to a higher elevation. So in that lead-in, they're asking us the complication most likely to occur in this patient if he immediately begins to climb at high altitude. Okay? So. What we'll do is first figure out how many steps uh, this patient, uh, this question is requiring. And I think most likely a uh, two-step question. I think one, we've got to figure out um, what is going on, what is the condition here? Um, and two, what is the complication if this persists, okay? Or, you know, continues to climb. I think we've got a two-step question here. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at those answer choices. Once again, we've got five answer choices. Once again, I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to work my way up to the top. Answer choice E, respiratory acidosis. D, pneumothorax. C, pleural effusions. B, increased serum bicarbonate. And A, ataxia. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and open up that poll. Give me just a second. Which of the following complications is most likely to occur in this patient if he immediately begins to climb at high altitude? Poll should be open now. Go ahead and place your bets. And we'll talk about it in just a few seconds. Okay, and once, once again, again that, uh, that, that oh, final yeah. word is cut off there, but uh, I think uh, I think you know what, uh, what what altitude is. It's like I'll over give you guys half a of you have voted. Words. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and close that poll. Take a look at what everyone has voted for. Hopefully you guys are seeing these results. And what we see here is a favorite answer choice E, answer choice B coming in second place, and answer choice A in third place. So let's go ahead. Let's take a look at those answer choices, or the correct answer. My apologies. And it is actually A, ataxia. 
So third place finisher. So let's take a look. What's going on in this question? Well, hopefully you guys picked up on that this patient is, you know, experiencing what we call altitude sickness. Okay. So this patient has nausea, fatigue, uh, arriving at high altitude just yesterday. Okay. So altitude sickness, also what's uh, sometimes referred to as acute mountain sickness. Okay. Usually within the first six to 48 hours when you travel to an area of high altitude. Okay. And this is driven by the lower partial pressure of oxygen at that high altitude. Usually, usually resolves by day three with rest and as your body and, and, and cardiovascular pulmonary system acclimate to that high altitude. However, if you continue to climb, even when experiencing that, you are at risk for certain complications. Okay, so what we see here is initially that at the very top, that initial response to high altitude. So you can see that low atmospheric oxygen, that low PaO2, leads to increased ventilation, respiratory alkal alkalosis, and what we call altitude sickness. So nausea, fatigue, lightheadedness, okay? Eventually, your body starts to compensate. However, acute mountain sickness, and you can see that table at the very bottom, eventually, acute mountain sickness, if, you, if it progresses, can lead to fluid accumulation, cerebral edema, okay? And this is due to increased capillary permeability in the brain, possibly due to high intracranial pressure. And if that were to progress, that could develop into pulmonary edema, high altitude pulmonary edema. That high altitude cerebral edema often presents as an encephalopathy and ataxic gait, as you can see there in the clinical, uh, in that cell, in that table, okay? So if this were to progress into cerebral edema, you could develop encephalopathy and ataxic gait, which is why ataxia is the best answer in this question, okay? Um, if we take a look at the other answer choices, let's talk about that real quick. Respiratory acidosis is actually the opposite of what we'd see. We would see respiratory alkalosis because we're hyperventilating. D, pneumothorax. Uh, this is common more so after trauma um, or uh, other chronic lung diseases. Pleural effusion, answer choice C. Um, that would be more so due to heart failure, liver failure, um, lung infection or malignancy. Answer choice B, increased uh, serum bicarbonate. Um, that would be more so with metabolic alkalosis um, and then possibly renal compensation for respiratory acidosis, okay? So this patient would instead have hyperventilation, which is not uh, what you would expect with respiratory acidosis. So the best answer here is ataxia, and hopefully now you guys understand some of those additional complications that can arise after uh, acute mountain sickness or altitude sickness.